Aluxers, today we'll be getting up close and personal with one of the most desired commodities throughout history. Pirates have plundered for it, explorers have searched for lost cities made of it and failed. Jewelers and fashion houses create beautiful objects from it, investors trade it, and even tech companies need it. Yes, we are talking about gold. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. It's been used as a means of exchange longer than any of the world's existing currencies, and because we take it for granted that gold is a measure of wealth, you may have never even asked yourself how it came to be so valuable in the first place. If this question has crossed your mind, you probably came to the conclusion that it's worth what it is, currently over $1,700 an ounce for pure or 24 karat gold, simply because it's rare and pretty. Well, Aluxers, we're gonna break it down for you. As you'll see, yes, those are both important factors, but there's actually quite a bit more to it. So let's uncover some answers to today's golden question and find out why is gold so expensive? First up, it's rare. No prizes for guessing this one. It doesn't make the list of the rarest metals in the world, but it's still pretty rare. For some perspective, more steel is created every hour than the gold that's been extracted from the earth in all of human history. If you put together all of the world's above surface gold in pure form, you'd only end up with about 190,000 tons. That's enough to fill two Olympic sized swimming pools. And compared to other precious metals it often gets compared to, like silver, gold is about 10 times more rare. It's difficult to extract. Mining gold has never been easy. In the old days, gold prospectors used to pan for it, and even today, old-fashioned images of miners and hats digging underground in South Africa or in deep-down muddy holes in Brazil still exist. But a lot of the time, the process isn't so labor-intensive, but relies on heavy, expensive machinery. Either way, if you wanted to get a gold mining operation underway, you'd need a lot of capital. And it isn't just the mining. Identifying a gold mine can take a decade and requires highly qualified experts, including chemists, geologists, and engineers. On top of that, gold prospectors have to pay governments for licenses to explore it. And the end result? Less than 1% of all areas prospected end up as profitable mines, so it's no wonder that whenever miners do literally hit gold, they demand high prices. At the moment, China is the world's biggest gold producer, accounting for 12% of world production, with Australia and Russia taking the second and third spots. It's the perfect metal for making jewelry. Of all the things gold goes into, we're going to start with jewelry. Not only because it's the oldest use of gold that we know of, also because 50% of gold that's mined today still goes into this original use, making things look blingy. In 2019, that was around 4,400 tons that went into jewelry, and it just so happens, if you ask jewelers to come up with an imaginary metal that would be their dream to work with, they wouldn't even have to invent one, they'd probably just name gold. That's because it ticks literally every box and its desirable characteristics go beyond just looking pretty. It's easy to shape. First, let's get a bit technical. It's very malleable. Malleability is a measure of how easily you can shape a material, and gold is the most malleable of all metals. In fact, you can take a single ounce of gold and hammer it out into a sheet that covers 300 square feet, which explains how you can make things look shiny and golden without having that much gold in them. As well as the ideal material to make necklaces, watches, ornaments, and any object of beauty you want to dazzle people with. It keeps its shine. That's right, as well as looking shiny, it stays shiny. Unlike silver, it doesn't tarnish or require constant polishing. Unlike copper, it doesn't oxidize and turn green. Take a look at the Statue of Liberty. In fact, it keeps its dazzling appearance pretty much forever. Ask a scientist and they'll tell you the reason for this is it's extremely unreactive. This also gives it a couple more niche benefits. It means that, unlike lead, it isn't poisonous. You can even eat it if you want to. And also because it's unreactive, it doesn't taste like anything. That means if you're a gourmet chef in a super exclusive restaurant and you want to bling up a steak, a glass of champagne, even a coffee or a chocolate sundae, you can use gold to do exactly that. And there are plenty of Michelin star chefs who do. And the gold won't even interfere with the taste. Its color is unique. 
Okay, so it's beautiful, it's shiny, and it's also unique. Lots of materials have roughly the same color as silver, including ones that are rarer and more expensive, like platinum and palladium. But gold is the only metal that's, well, golden. For centuries, it was the perfect form of exchange. The oldest gold coins we know of were made by King Croesus of Lydia. Nowadays, that would be Western Turkey, in about 540 BC. And there are some pretty good reasons why gold was chosen to make the earliest payments. It's rare, but not too rare. Platinum would have been impractical as there's so little of it around. Totally aside from the fact that it's harder to work with and ancient cultures probably didn't even know platinum existed. Common metals wouldn't have fit the bill because, well, they're too common to be worth that much. Copper was used by the ancient Chinese, but it oxidized. It's true that silver also fit the bill and was used as currency alongside gold, but as gold is about 10 times more rare than silver, gold has always been seen as silver's prettier, classier sister. It's a highly prized investment. More recently, governments backed up their paper currencies with gold reserves that they kept in their vaults. This practice ended in the second half of the 20th century. The USA stopped pegging the dollar to gold in 1971, and Switzerland was the last country to get rid of the gold standard in 1999. But banks still do hold gold reserves, and demand from central banks continues to be one big reason that its price stays so high. In 2018, central banks bought 651 tons of it. That's about $27 billion worth in gold prices at the time. And of course, investors use it to diversify their portfolios, specifically as a form of security against currency devaluation and inflation. Gold is seen as a sort of safe haven in times of financial uncertainty. In the 2008 financial crisis, it shot up in value as investors all over the world were losing faith in the world's major currencies and turning to gold. It was at this time it went above the $10,000 an ounce mark. And in the coronavirus crisis, you can bet your bottom dollar that yes, the price has shot up further, from a high of $1,542 in 2019 to its current price above $1,700 an ounce in May of 2020. And crises aside, historically it increases in value faster than the rate of inflation. From around $300 an ounce 50 years ago to above $1,700 now, it's increased almost six times. Why is that? Well, let's think about it. What makes any investment, whether stocks, currencies, or commodities, more or less valuable is their perceived value and how confident people are it's going to keep that value. Remember that gold has been used as a store of wealth for over two and a half thousand years. With a history like that, there's no currency or company on the S&P 500 that can compete with that. And with important customers like central banks as well as the world's best known fashion houses, there's no reason to think its price is going anywhere but up in the long term. Tech companies need it. So we all know gold's pretty and people are confident that it will keep its value. But totally aside from putting it in a necklace or keeping it in a vault, it's got practical uses too. As if it weren't enough being prized among the world's most prestigious jewelers and shrewdest investors, there's another group that's also buying up gold tech firms. Gold is one of the best conductors of electricity. This means it's used in small quantities in wiring and electronics, where it's needed for highly specialized purposes. Take a look at the device you're using to watch this video on. You guessed it, it contains gold. Sure, it's only used in small quantities, but at the rate smart devices are being produced, this use accounts for about 14% of gold, and it's also used in nuclear technology in satellites and radiation shielding, in medicine and dentistry to coat teeth, and even in injections to relieve pain for arthritis sufferers. And the visors and astronauts' helmets are also coated in thin, transparent layers of gold, which reflects heat and the sun's glare. Gold also has a sense of mystery. This might seem like a strange one to put on the list, but stop a moment to think about the most prestigious luxury brands in the world. They have an allure about them, almost a sense of magic whenever you hear their name. This keeps customers coming back more and makes investors confident in them. Gold, although it isn't a brand, has this wow factor in spades, or maybe we should say in carrots, and it's had it for centuries. Since ancient times, it's been used to make items for royalty and religious rituals. You can even read about it in the Bible. When we visit opulent palaces or ornately decorated churches, it's all gold that dazzles us more than anything else. 
Nowadays, the most fashionable brands make their most luxurious pieces out of it. Prestigious awards from Olympic medals for first place, Oscars, Grammys, Nobel Prizes, and obviously the Golden Globes are made of it. It's wowed us with its associations of nobility, the divine, and luxury. And it's even embedded itself into our way of thinking. Look at the number of expressions in English or any other language for that matter that use it. To be worth your weight in gold, to strike gold, to be like gold dust. It's almost as if gold has its own marketing department that's been working overtime the last 6,000 years. That's since the first known gold artifact was sculpted. And all of this means that gold is instilled in our minds as one of the most desirable commodities imaginable, and this can only add to its high price. But will gold hold its value? The answer to this one is almost certainly yes, and it could start to rise even faster in the not-too-distant future. It's estimated that stocks of gold that are still below ground and that we can realistically mine are limited, and they could run out in just 20 years from now. But there's no sign of demand shrinking, even if the world lost interest in beautiful jewelry overnight, as if that's about to happen. With its practical applications for computing and technology, gold would still be a prized commodity. And that could mean that in the years to come, its value will rise even faster. And let's end this with another interesting prediction about the future of gold. Scientists know that gold can be found on meteorites, and possibly on Mars, Mercury, and Venus as well. This means that with space exploration forging ahead, the next gold rush could be in space. And Alexers, here we are at the end. We're curious to know, in your mind, what's the most beautiful item made from gold you've ever seen? Tell us in the comments. And for sticking with us until the end, here's your bonus. You want to see the most ridiculously over-the-top bling item we could find that's made of, or at least coated in gold? We passed on items like gold shirts and gold barbecue sets and a gold set of poker chips to choose the gold-plated Lamborghini Aventador. This absolute top-of-the-range Lamborghini is made out of carbon fiber, which is then coated in 500 kilograms of solid gold, as well as diamonds in the headlights and 700 precious stones woven into the seats. And all of it can be yours for a price tag of $7.4 million. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.